everybody. Keith, aka Gator Guy 231. It is Wednesday, August 12th. And yes, the Champions League is back. We have four straight days, single elimination, neutral venues, huge action. Cannot wait for the next four games of football. The only thing that would have made it better is if DraftKings would have like sucked up their showdown pride or whatever we want to call it and given us like either two two day classic slates or a four day you know PGA style uh Champions League classic slate but now it's officially so showdown season at DraftKings like I get it completely I'm not even honestly that mad like you know classic slates are always going to be trending towards going away um you know just a quick thing on that like from what I had like read and heard, you know, DraftKings is all about freeing up the equity, you know, freeing up your bankroll back again so they can have you enter in more contests and get you done Champions League in time and, uh, so that you can play like three uh, NBA showdowns or MLB classic. Like they just want you to get your money right back in to play. So I get it. Um, just would have been awesome. That said, let's take what we've got, which is four more days of soccer. Um, and some of the best clubs in Europe to uh, to watch. So uh, just a quick note, if you uh, enjoy our videos, please bottom right of the screen, subscribe button, please, please, please hit, hit it. Um, just really, really helps. We Our goal is to get to 1,000, um, and anything you guys can do to support us would help. Also, if you are interested in more premium content, um, more core plays, more chat before uh, lock, hit the cheat sheet button at the bottom and it will take you um, to our website where you can subscribe for as little as three dollars a day or weekly package which would probably be the best with everything going on is only 10 bucks all right let's jump in to the action so um first off just a reminder this is a neutral site so uh, it's in it's in lisbon um so we do not have to worry about home field either way PSG's slight favorite at plus 105, Atalanta's plus 350, I'm sorry, 250, three total. I'll go over the sets here at the bottom on the diagram. The biggest thing to watch will be Kylian Mbappe. Everything that I have read um, is he is going to play at some point, um, just that he is not fit for 90. Anytime I see something like that, my assumption would be that Tuchel is going to bring him on. Maybe, you know, as early as that half or maybe like 60 minutes or, you know, if it just all depends on game flow, but I would assume that he would want him for the end of the game, not the beginning. So the, on the PSG side of the ball, this is very much likely what we're going to see because PSG just doesn't have a lot of options. Um, Angel Di Maria is suspended for the game for yellow card accumulation. So it should be Neymar on the left, a card in the middle. If you remember, Cavani is already signed for a new club. So I doubt, I didn't even look at the squad, but I doubt he's even in the squad. And then Sarabia on the right. That will put Neymar on almost all the sets. Uh, Sarabia could could take some um, in-swinging from, what would that be, from the right. Um, but I would expect Neymar to be on all of them. And let's be real, like, whether Neymar is on sets or not, it doesn't, make, doesn't change the fact that he's the best player on the slate. Best floor, best ceiling, best everything. Um, I think he is going to be in like cash upwards of 80 to 90% at captain and hundred percent owned. I don't see even one person fading him. This pricing on the slate is actually really, really soft. Um, somewhat disappointing. I, I kind of wanted a more difficult build, but I guess the good, the good part about being soft is I think there's a lot of routes. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of duplicated lineups um, in cash games, which I'll be, I'm happy about. I do want to just say this at the end, I will be talking about GP strategies. For those that have commented, I saw one public comment yesterday. I've had a ton of DMs over the last few weeks. I want more GPP content. I got some GPP stuff coming for you at the end. But let's go through the players and then I'll talk about strategies. So Neymar in cash, in GPP, the most popular captain, most popular player, most popular everything. That's going to be something that we need to leverage if you want to win some GPPs at the end. Um, Icardi is a goal or best player. Obviously, Atalanta. Um, has been known to leak goals, they leak shots. Akari, the big thing with him is his shot floor is not great. Um, this season, give me two seconds here, apologies. 
But this season in the Ligoon, um, only averaged 1.6 shots per game, right? So, you know, the, the strikers that we love, especially when they're priced at this high, are the guys that have shot for us that, you know, without a goal still might give us uh, three shots and, you know, a shot assisted. Um, 1.6 shots per game and 0.5 or 0.6 um, passes leading to a shot. So your floor is around three, which is yikes for his price. So I, to me, he's cheap fee only. Sarabia um, is a fine price. <coughs> Excuse me, my apologies. Um, he's only 7,400. The big thing with Sarabia is, you know, with Mbappe on the bench, like when is he going to sub? So I think that it's not like if he's going to sub, it's when he's going to sub. The only exception might be if like PSG is down two to zero, maybe they leave Sarabia on, maybe Mbappe comes in for like a Herrera or a, or, or a Drisa Gay to give more attack. But you know that's the front three. I think Sarabia is fine. Um, again, I just I'm going to weigh here um, at his price. Like, would I rather play Malinowski um, or? I don't know. It's hard. Like that, that's one of the big decisions I think that people are going to be on is like, do I take Sarabia? He's on the slightly better side, but obviously, you know, he's a secondary option versus Malinowski on some sets for Atalanta in a good attacking position. Uh, Papu Gomez, you know, will set up everybody. So, you know, which one do I want to pick? That'll be tough. Or do you want to go Acardi or Zapata? The coolest thing about this slate, in my opinion, is you can do all those options with Neymar at captain, with Gomez, and your utility as well. So that is wild. All right. Uh, midfield three for PSG are all way too cheap. You are definitely going to be using this guy's Ander Herrera is 3,400. Adrisa Gay was shockingly 3,200. I think Gay is the better DFS play, uh, just more involved in tackling. I think he is less likely to get subbed out. But Anna Herrera might have more upside, more just pure goal scoring um, upside, you know, as a better, like, more creative player. So I think that, you know, you can honestly play both. You can play one. I don't think there's lineups that you don't play either. Um, the fullbacks for PSG are not great. They are not big crossers. Juan Bernat um, is going to be popular at 6,000 based off his logs. You know, in the – in uh, – in uh, the Champions League, he's sorry for struggling that and he had 16 DK last game, but that included a goal. So if you take out the goal, you know, six, six floor, 7.6, 6.8, 7.8, 5.3. And you go back into the league, and that's about the same, too. Again, just not a huge crosser. Um, you know, he's going to get some stats here and there. So I think he's fine. Gossens is only 6,400. So I think I'd prefer him. But, you know, I'm not going to kill anybody if they show up with uh, multiple fullbacks in cash. It's kind of a a staple for building. Um, Tilo Kerr, Kerr, however he's it. And you know, he's a natural center back that plays some fullback. He definitely does not want to cross either. We'll get forward a little bit. He is much cheaper um, at 4,600. But again, you know, do you need either one of these guys? Are they must? They're absolutely not. The coolest, like I said, the coolest thing about the slate is the price priced in a way that you can play, you know, Multiple attackers and some midfielders. If you want to go fullbacks and more conservative, you can do that. My biggest issue with these fullbacks is just the upside. You know, I guess Bernat has better upside than Kerr, but I just don't want to lock in, you know, guys that are going to only give me like three to four DK because I don't think they're going to be clean cheeks here. I expect both teams to score. So just, you know, trying to get part of the goals or at least have guys that have you give you a better chance to be part of the goals, I think is going to be critical. Uh, Marquinhos, too, is fine. Um, it is kind of like he is a very deep-lying midfielder when in. You know, he's by no means like a number 10 or somebody that really wants to get involved in the attack, but, you know, can always show up with a center uh, with a header goal or something like that. All right, let's go to the Atalanta side. Papo Gomez is on most of the sets. He will split when Malinowski went in, but he has one of the highest fours in DFS in the world. Loves to shoot, loves to cross is incredibly creative and he is just too cheap um i don't know why he's only 8800 i guess i'm not gonna bitch about it because it just makes builds easier but i expected to pull up the slate and when i saw Neymar at 12-4 i'm like okay gomez is gonna be like 11-8 and he's 8800 so you just will see almost every good cash player lock those two in i think Neymar at captain and then just off and running so um don't fade him uh in cash GPP, you know, we'll talk about. Zapata will be the guy that gets a lot of ownership as well as 9,800. Big goal scorer in Serie A. Unlike Acardi, um, Duvan Zapata does have a shot floor. 
Uh, he averaged 2.5 shots per game, 18 goals, 25 starts, and also gives us 1.4 passes that leads to shots per game. Now, obviously, in the Serie A, Atalanta has a number of opponents that they can run all over, um, score. They're one of the highest scoring. I think they ended as the highest scoring team in Europe. Don't hold me to that, but I want to say that they did end up that way. They did struggle when they came back, and that, that's something I want to go over here in a second. But Zapata, you know, is the key scorer for Atalanta. After Malinowski butchered a PK a few games ago, I'm pretty sure he will be on PK duty as well. So he is a fine play. In my opinion, he's kind of like fringe cash. Probably more suited for GPP, but if you show up in cash, again, I won't kill you. Malinowski is the other, the other um, top option for Atlanta in terms of pricing. He's 8,400. Good player. Uh, you know, he is going to get a share of set pieces. Is an active shooter, um, active crosser, you know, from the sets. And, you know, just does give you upside. So, you know, his stats in Serie A, 1.7 shots per game and then 1.4 key passes per game. So, again, I kind of want to compare all this to Cardi because I think uh, Cardi will catch some steam. And just in terms of, like, having a floor and, you know, without getting a goal, still not killing your lineups, Malinowski and Zapata are definitely better plays than Icardi. Although you can argue argue that Icardi's goal scoring is much higher than either one of them being on this side. All right. Gossens will be very popular in cash, 6,400. As a wing back, he is incredibly involved in the offensive attack. He scored nine goals, had eight assists, 1.1 shots per game, 1.2 key passes per game. I will note all of Atlanta, and it is where I'll talk, all of Atlanta struggled once Joseph Ilicic did not get back into the lineup. Uh, I can't even remember the whole story on him. I think it's some personal things um, with Ilicic. Anyhow, he was like, Gomez has always been the the engine that runs Atlanta, but Gomez, I'm sorry, but Ilicic, Gomez has always been that guy. Ilicic, though, just had just taken off, had having a career year, was I think at once UCL slate, was the highest priced guy on the slate because he, you know, the previous game he had like four goals. So they're missing him hugely. They definitely have not been on for that boy, boy, Malinowski, and um, I can't remember the Chelsea Loney's guy right now, his name. Uh, he won't start. But anyhow, they um, they just aren't being able to fill that void. So, you know, I th- would love to see this game with Alyssa Jen, but without it, you know, I do tick at the moment. He's not nearly as offensive as Gossens. Um, not a big crosser. Does show up with goal from time to time. Um, do like his price though, forty six hundred. You know, versus uh, K- Tilo Carer. You know, they, they don't even uh, you know equate or match up in my opinion. I would take Hedeborg in that situation. Fruler, Darun, just in play. They're midfielders. I'd much rather go on the PSG side of the ball. All right, so that does like kind of the breakdowns for the teams. Let's talk about GBP strategy for a few minutes, and then we'll get out of here. So, you if you know that. Neymar is going to be the chalk captain and that Gomez. The, those are the two guys that everybody's going to click to start their lineup. And that's going to happen in GPPs too, right? Those are going to be the two highest zone players. What are you going to do to differentiate your lineup? Because when we're playing these GPPs and these top heavy GPPs at that, we're not playing to tie. We're not playing to min cash. Min cash is going to make you lose money in the long run. You need to be shooting for the top. So I would say the first thing that comes to mind is goalies. Um, I think with all of the firepower on the slate, that the goalies may even go lesser own than before. So Kaylor Navas, uh, if you want to do like a mini PSG stack, you could easily do like Neymar, Acardi, still play Gomez, but then go to Navas, and then you you know can go like a center back. You could play Marquinhos to get some like a clean sheet correlation. But even if you don't want to like necessarily say there's a clean sheet, maybe they win two to one, you could easily see Navas, you know, show up with three, four saves, concede one, get the win bonus, have 11 DK or 12 DK, and at 7,000, easily be the top scorer in that range, right? Like Gossens is not going to score 11 points without a goal or assist. So, you know, that's one route that you can go right away. Or maybe you go Neymar. Uh, I can't remember if I said Cardi, but Neymar and Sarabia. Um, 
or whatever. But I think novice would be the first one. The more contrarian route is to just actually stack up Atalanta, play Sportiello. You still play Neymar. Like Neymar is going to get like 15 DK with or without a goal. But, you know, maybe do like a 5-1 type of stack where you go Gomez, Zapata, Sportiello. You probably can still play Gossens, Hadabor, Neymar, rock and roll. So I think those are two right away contrarian constructions using goalies. Um, I don't think it's a two goalie slate. I don't think you're going to – I just don't think you're going to bake in enough upside to make that work um, unless it's like zero to zero, but I don't see that. Uh, another route uh, I think would be just a different different captain. So obviously it's going to be Neymar or Gomez. I think that'll account for well over 50% of the captain choices. So Zapata or Icardi and try to shoot for those goals will both come in a lot lesser um, and immediately already just start you down different constructions. Um, Trying to think, like, look at this is a showdown, guys. Like, there's not, you can go a lot of different routes, but I think that those are like the most, con- the best GDP routes that I could think. Again, just, you know, you got to just go in the mindset that I know what people are going to do. I know that people are going to want to start with Neymar. I know people are going to want to start with um, Gomez. So let me either A, do something different with those lineups, right? Because, you know, most people are going to go Neymar, Gomez, Zapata. Arcardi, Malinowski, or Sarabia, right? Those are going to be the next click because people like to start up top and then kind of make their way down. So it's so easy to get one of those guys. You go there, Gossens is going to be incredibly popular. So those are the, the secondary types sort of give me where I think you make your moves. Um, other option, obviously, is to play Mbappe off the bench. Um, I think that that's huge risk where his tag is at, but you can make it work. Um, and, you know, is he going to be like 3 4% on probably? Um, if you get a goal, Yahtzee, if you don't, you know, you're not going to get enough floor to make up for it. But I would just say outside of Gomez and Neymar, I just don't think there's a ton of floor on this slate. So I don't hate the idea. I think that that's pretty much will do it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this preview. Should be a fun day. If you have any sort of questions, comments, leave it in the comment section. I will be checking throughout the day. Wish you all luck and enjoy the football. Take it easy, guys.